For decades, the food industry has been misleading us, and as a result, the food that we eat has actually been eating into our pocketbooks. In all seriousness, you could save up to 30% the next time you go to the grocery store, and all it takes is one simple change. By the end of today's episode, you'll be asking yourself, have we just all been drinking the Kool-Aid, 40 count for $6.99, when we really should be drinking the Flavor-Aid, 40 count for $4.99. internet welcome to food theory the youtube series that can now come in its own variety pack you know theorists i've got a confession something's been bothering me since my last trip to the store in actuality it's something that's bothered me for a while but i'm only just getting around now to researching it and doing an episode about it since as a youtuber my life is constantly just fodder for new content you see it all started with vitamins the other day i was over at target and spent way too long comparing the labels for various multivitamins and what i was finding was that those labels had practically the exact same list of ingredients in the exact same order. Maybe sometimes there was a very little difference in percent daily value, but for the product that I was looking for, nope, totally the same on every level. So why then was one bottle $20 and the other just 10? What was causing one jar to be nearly double the cost when the stuff inside was, at least according to the ingredients list, identical? Well, the big difference was branding. One was a name brand and the other a generic. And yet, is that enough? to cause that $10 spread in price? I mean, a bit cheaper, sure, I kinda get that, but what is so wrong with those things that make them a whole $10 cheaper? In the end, I couldn't make a decision and left without the multivitamins, but with a food theory topic. What is the difference with generic store brand products? Sure, I might be saving $10 today, but should I actually be worried about sprouting a third leg out of my face because I'm sucking down some tainted vitamin C? How can I save money without sacrificing quality when I'm buying store brand food? And just just how deep does this rabbit hole go? Well, that, loyal theorists, is what I aim to answer today. When you pay full price for a brand name product, are you actually getting sold a lemon? The vastly more expensive brand name lemon. So who are our competitors? In corner number one, brand name products. A brand name product might also be called a national brand because they're often owned, produced, and distributed across the US under that name. These are your favorite, very recognizable products. Your Campbell's soups, your Hershey's chocolate, your Lay's potato chips, and your Oreo cookies. They're the brands that you know and love and trust. They're as American as your uncle's 4th of July picnic and you'll eat them even if you don't absolutely love them because they're sold just about everywhere. And because shoving more chips into your mouth is a lot easier than talking to your family. Which brings us over to contestant number two, generics. Also known as store brand, off brand, or no name products. Which, by the way, is not how the stores want you to see them. Retailers prefer the term private label. Good on them dressing for the job that they want and not the one that they have. Now, back in the day, these things were pretty darn easy to spot. Getting their own aisle in the supermarket, or packaged with stark white and yellow boxes and cans that looked like they fell out of a scientific testing facility. Nowadays though, grocery stores have gotten so good at marketing their homegrown products, you might not even realize that they're owned and operated by the store itself. Oh sure, for every Pringles, there's a Prongles. For every I can't believe it's not butter, there's a butter it's not, or a wow, I totally thought it was butter, or a unbelievable this is not butter. <laughs> there's so many of these. But not all of them are so hilarious bad. For example, if you're at Target strolling through the syrup selection planning an epic pancake breakfast, you might come across Pearl Milling Company Original Syrup, Log Cabin Original Syrup, Market Pantry Original Syrup, Archer Farm Pure Maple Syrup, and Simply Balanced Organic Pure Maple Syrup. The first two, Pearl Milling and Log Cabin, are national brands distributed by Target. The latter three, Market Pantry, Archer Farms, and Simply Balanced, are all private label, Target-owned brands, with all the profits coming back to them in every single way. Unless you're actively looking for it, you wouldn't really know about this. Let's just say that they've come a long way from great value frosted flakes. They're acceptable. But okay, outside of the hilariously bad packaging that some of these things get, is there actually a quality difference with generic products? Because let's face it, that's the thing that really matters here. And the numbers back this up. In various consumer surveys, more than 60% of respondents say that they're likely or very likely to choose brand named products. The biggest reason for that is trust in quality, with 78% of responses saying that brand named products are sometimes or always better in quality than generic products.
products. So that's what people believe, but is there actually a difference? Or is this all built on hype and perception? Well, let's start with taste. A 2014 study by the American Association of Wine Economists found that when comparing three major beer brands in a blind taste test, those surveyed couldn't tell the difference. Sometimes even when the subject claimed that one of the beers tested was their go-to beer of choice. But how would a blind taste test play out when facing off between your grocery store's in-house goods versus a popular name brand? Well, a study published by University of Chicago showed that in a blind taste test, people surveyed predicted that they would choose a name brand product even if they thought highly of the grocery store's brands. In a surprising twist, an overwhelming majority chose the grocery store brand, completely upending people's expected reactions. Additionally, a 2009 issue of Consumer Reports found that when they compared brand names with generic alternatives in 29 food categories, in 23 cases, they were either deemed equal or the generic option one. The study concluded that when you're buying name brand products, you're only paying for the cost of the research, development, and marketing that literally helped to make it a household name in the first place. But while us plebs might not be able to tell an Oreo from a Hydrox from a cream between, what about actual cooks with real palates? Surely they should be able to tell a difference, right? Well, they can, and they agree. Chefs actually agree and opt into generics, or at least that's what their buying habits suggest. According to a 2014 study reported on by NPR, chefs were more likely to buy generic groceries than the general public. This was especially true in cases where chefs bought raw ingredients for baking, like powdered sugar, brown sugar, granulated sugar, baking soda, and baking mix. However, there were product categories where chefs tended to choose name brand products more often, specifically when it comes to dairy products, including name branded yogurts and ice cream. This is pretty darn good news for me because now I feel completely justified shelling out the big bucks for Ben and Jerry's every time I go to the store. So in general, it seems that if you're going to buy staple food products, sugars, baking sodas, pastas, breads, things like that, generic brands are going to be similar in quality, but cheaper. And not just similar, but sometimes exactly the same. When it comes to those raw ingredients like flour, sugar, cornstarch, and pepper, those are regulated, which means that even at the cheapest levels, the quality is ensured to be there. But it doesn't stop there. Stores will often hire out the same manufacturers that make the brand name products so they can make their own version of that product to sell for cheaper. Despite what benefits a name brand might advertise, they're likely to deliver similar results to the generic options. So why don't we see more people opting into generics? Well, when it comes to our experience of food, turns out that your other senses play disproportionate roles in the experience. Back in 1975, Pepsi did this huge marketing campaign called the Pepsi Challenge, where they were trying to show the world that Pepsi was the preferred flavor of soda over Coke. As you might imagine, Pepsi won. Go figure. They paid for the whole thing. Of course they won. There are also a lot of ways that you can skew a blind taste test in this sort of situation that are probably best reviewed on another episode. But anyway, what I'm more interested in is that in 2004, a group of researchers at Baylor College of Medicine wanted to redo that same taste test, but this time while studying branding's impact on the brain. They found that when subjects were given information on what they were drinking before they tasted it, Coke activated areas of the brain associated with memory and emotion, whereas knowing that it was Pepsi had no effect on the subject's brain. For some reason, those who drink Coke are just loyal to the memory and feeling of it, even if their blind taste buds beg to differ. So when you're shopping in a store, the look, the feel, and the memory of a specific brand or product is actually trumping your own experience of taste. You know the saying, there's no accounting for taste? Well, we can absolutely account for taste. It's all the other senses that become inconsistent. That said, even walking into the grocery store knowing that your brain is actually lying to you about your perception of your favorite brands might start to impact whether or not you might let your taste buds take the wheel once in a while. And if you choose to trust your actual taste, your wallet will likely thank you later. Ramsey Solutions, an online debt management company, estimated this year that buying generic products will cost you anywhere from 28 to 65% less on any given meal, and over time would likely save you over a thousand dollars a year on dinner alone, making the exact same recipes that you're already making using the exact same ingredients, just with a different name and image on the cover. Historically, generics were cheaper to produce so they could sell at a lower price, so it is still important to check ingredient lists to look for any differences that could affect the quality, health benefits, or taste. But all of this begs a question. How can grocery stores get away with copying the look and flavor of your favorite foods and stock them on the shelves side by side? Well, you know what that means. It's time to dip into one of our favorite subjects on this channel, licensing and patent law. Innovations in food are technically eligible to be patented, though that can be easier said than done due to the nature of the recipes themselves. According to the United States Patent and Trademark Office, patents may be given out to any new and useful innovation. Considering the history of food preparation basically spans the entirety of human existence, having anything that's truly original in the culinary arts is gonna be difficult to define and prove. Most new recipes evolve from existing ones. For example, Justin's nut butter peanut 
butter cup is just a Reese's dressed up in fancier pans. There is nothing truly original there. No, in an unexpected twist, patents don't seem to be the best way to protect yourself from generics eating your lunch, but instead you consider developing trade secret protection. By US Patent and Trademark Office definition, quote, trade secrets consist of information and can include a formula, pattern, compilation, program, device, method, technique, or process. This means something like how the ingredients are mixed together, shaken, not stirred, or some kind of secret formulation only known to the company. Under this category, think Dr. Pepper, KFC fried chicken, Bush's baked beans, the internet's fictional favorite Krabby Patties, all protected by trade secrets and each company marketing their recipe as a secret in their advertising. My biggest question about this then was how could you get away with actually having secret ingredients in food since don't you have to list the ingredients on labels, like for allergy reasons, that kind of thing? Well, yes, but the FDA in the US is very specific that those labels should not infringe on trade secrets, meaning that companies can indeed leave off specific spices, flavorings, and the like if those are part of their proprietary methods. And somehow, in a day and age when you can practically track every pair of shoes your old high school flame's been wearing for the last 10 years, many of those secrets have managed to remain secrets. Famously, companies like Bimbo, who make Thomas's English muffins, and Hellman's, who have trade secrets filed in the mayonnaise industry, have sued former employees, even going as far as to bar them from working at other companies in order to protect their trade recipes. Coca-Cola keeps their recipe in a literal vault in Atlanta, which, of course, I have visited to pay my respects. So, while they're great in the sense that they don't expire, if the secret leaks, suddenly the gig is up. Based on that, you kind of have to wonder how many hitmen are out there working for companies like General Mills to keep their trade secrets intact. We told you, tricks is for kids. Generics companies are also just fantastic at reverse engineering the formulas, which is also totally allowed, and how Refresh gets to sit alongside LaCroix in the Safeway shelf, which is just a waste of time across the board because LaCroix is gross. That is not a theory. I really don't like LaCroix. But all that being said, we are entering into a golden era for grocery stores' homegrown products, and the rapidly growing market share they control proves it. A Nielsen report found that at the end of 2017, private label sales grew three times faster than branded products. Generic brands are getting a full-on movie makeover montage sequence right now, improving their quality while also revamping their look. They're expanding their range with options like organics, naturals, premium, mid-tier, and value lines. Instead of buying Safeway brand and bleak packaging, we now have the option to buy O Organics, Open Nature, Lucerne, and many, many more of their own brands. On top of all of that, generationally, we're just moving away from brand names. Millennials and Gen Z both have less affinity for specific brands than previous generations, partially because they're faced with so much choice out there in the market, and partially because big national brands have shown themselves to be less than trustworthy, either because of some issue with ingredients, or some issue with marketing, or just some issue with their values. Why be loyal to a brand that doesn't share the things that are important to you as the consumer? These kinds of meta-brand alliances take us even further away from trusting our taste buds, but do ironically lead to a more generic, friendly buying experience. The last, and honestly most devastating battle that national brands are having to face currently is generic's ability to market based on incredibly detailed user data. The reason that ugly generic packaging has been replaced with stealthy generics disguised as their own brands? Well, the national chains like Target and Costco have data from millions of customers that tell them exactly what they want to buy. The words that they want to see printed on the packaging of ingredients, the colors on the bags, the placement of the products in the aisles, and they have all that data as well as the data of how the national brands perform. Remember, we're now living in a world where your grocery store local buyer card number is linked to your cell phone and your credit card data and your location history and all your spending and browsing habits. They know everything about you, meaning that the products that they make and the marketing they use to target you can be anything but generic. The national brands are all playing a pretty rigged game here when it comes to competing with these mega food sellers, but uh, that's probably a theory for a different day. So in a world overwhelmed and oversaturated with brands and products, how do you manage to make the choice? Well, in most cases, it comes down to comparing ingredients and assessing your values in what you want from your product, but you are definitely going to get a better price on a generic. So in most cases, you can have your perfectly fine Betty Croker cake mix and eat it too. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. And whatever you do, don't go to the grocery store on an empty stomach. That's a recipe for an empty wallet and four unnecessary boxes of blueberry pop-tarts. Or toaster pastries, I suppose, if you're going generic. For other cost-saving tips for the next time you go to the grocery store, click the link that you see on screen right now. You're not gonna believe what they're doing to you over in the produce section.